Hello. Uh, so today we are going to be working on finding distance on a coordinate plane. This is uh, on unit the Pythagorean theorem and then the student handout number four. So sometimes finding the distance between points on a graph is super easy. Like on this graph A, we would just count from here to here. It's on a straight line, so we could just go one, two, three. But sometimes we can't do that. Like on graph B, this is not a straight line along one of our grid lines, so it's not easy to do. We have to use Pythagorean theorem. So in order to find that, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to create our own right triangle. Because if we know, if we can make a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for that distance. So when we do solve for that, it's going to be the hypotenuse, the longest side. Or when we're using Pythagorean theorem, this is going to be our C in our formula. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to do that. Down here, we see a coordinate plane. I'm going to zoom in on this real quick, just so you guys can really get a good idea of what I'm doing here. So, you're going to need a straight edge. You can use whatever straight edge you want, just make sure it's straight. So, here's what you do. You go to one of your points, I'm going to use a, a nice card I have here. It's a little puppy. Alright, so I'm going to use that as my straight edge. I'm going to go to my first point, and I'm going to draw a line straight up and down. Okay. That line goes straight up and down. Then I'm going to go to my other point, and I'm going to draw a line straight left and right. So those two lines that you draw should be perfectly lined up with the grid lines of our, of our uh, coordinate plane, okay? Then we're also going to connect A and B. So there's our right triangle right there. We have a right angle right here. So now we can use Pythagorean theorem to solve for our distance between A and B. How we do that is we count how long this side is. Okay, so we got to get to right here. So I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five. So over here, I know that that side length is five. On this one over here, I have one, two, three, four. So that side length is 4. Now I'm trying to figure out what this one is. Okay, So I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem down here to solve that. So I'm going to use 4 as a, so I've got 4 squared plus 5 as b, so I'm going to put 5 squared equals c squared. Okay. Then I can go ahead and simplify a little bit. So 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, and that equals c squared. Then I'm going to go ahead and add these together. So 25 plus 16 is 41 equals c squared. And then in order to get c by itself, I'm going to have to take the square root of both sides. So the squared cancels the square root. I get C equals, and then you're going to need to use a calculator on this one since it's not a perfect square. So go ahead and do that on your calculator. Second square root, and the square root of 41 is, we're going to just round to the nearest tenth, so it's going to be 6.4. So 6.4 units between A and B right there. Let's go ahead and do one more to the other here. I'm going to jump over to number two. So again, 
you can start by connecting A and B. That's the distance we're trying to find. And then go to one of your points and draw a line straight up and down. I'm going to go to A and draw a line straight up and down. And then I'm going to go to B and draw my line straight left and right. Again, these should be on perfect grid lines. Okay, I have a little extra piece here I could get rid of if I don't want that. Okay, so you can see right here, I have my right angle. If I have a right triangle, I can use Pythagorean theorem to solve for any of these pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count how long is this side. It is 1, 2 to get to this point over here. And then this one much longer, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this side is 7 units long. That didn't line up very well. 7 units long. Okay, and then I can use Pythagorean theorem. So I didn't do this in the first example, but I always like to start with the formula and then put in the things I know. So I always use A as my shortest side, so I'm going to put 2 there. B is always my other leg, which is 7. And then we're looking for the hypotenuse, or C. Okay, and then we're just going to start solving. So 2 squared is 4, plus 7 squared is 49. And then we have C squared here. We can go ahead and put these together. So 53 equals C squared. And then we do the square root to get C by itself. So we're going to do that on both sides. So the square and the square root cancel out to just leave me with C. And then, uh, again, we're going to have to use our calculator because this is not a perfect square. So square root of 53 is 7.28. So we're going to go ahead and round that to 7.3. I would like you guys to solve number three right now. Hopefully you guys started by making your right triangle. So I'm going to connect A and B. And then I'm going to go to A, draw my line straight up and down. Then I'm going to go to B. And draw my lines straight left and right, following those grid lines. And you should have hopefully ended up with a triangle that looks exactly like that. So I know I'm trying to find this length between A and B. So in order to do that, I need to find the length of my legs. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 on this side. And then this one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 on that side. Interesting. Let's see what happens with this. So, uh, I always write my formula. We've got a squared plus b squared equals c squared. My legs are both the same, so that's going to be 8 squared plus 8 squared equals c squared. I know that 8 squared is 64. So 64 plus 64 equals c squared. 64 plus 64 is 128 equals c squared. And then let's see what happens here. This is not a perfect square. So I'm going to have to do the square root of both sides. These cancel. I'm left with c equals. And then the square root of 128 is... 11.31, so we're just going to make that 11.3. All right, let's go ahead and jump to the back here. We're going to do uh, number seven here. So find the perimeter of the trapezoid. So I wanted to do this one because... It, it 
incorporates what we've been doing, creating those right triangles, but it also adds this extra piece of finding the perimeter. So the perimeter, let's just make a little note here, is the distance around the outside. So I know most of the perimeter already because I can count here and say this is one, two, three, four, five, six. This one here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then this one down here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So I know three out of the four sides. But this one right here is where it gets tricky, right? Well, not really for us. We're going to know how to do this. What's nice about this one is we already have like a couple pieces of our triangle. We just have to finish it off. So if we're using this, we already have this line here. We're just going to have to stop it right there. So we're going to go to this point. We're going to draw a line straight up and down so that we can form our right triangle. So you'll see right here, here's our right angle. Now we can use this and the Pythagorean theorem to solve for this side. So I'm gonna count my bottom leg here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna put it on the inside so I don't confuse it with this 12 over here. And then I can count the height which I already know because it's going to be the same as right over here. So this line and this line are the same height, so I already know this one is 8. So now I can use that to solve for my hypotenuse, for C, right here. So I'm going to start with A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And then I'm going to fill it in. So I always like to make A my shortest side, B my second longest, and then C is obviously the hypotenuse. So then when I do 6 squared, I get 36, plus 8 squared is 64, and I think this one's going to come out really nicely, because 36 plus 64 is 100, equals C squared, and then we take the square root of both sides to get C by itself. This cancels. Uh, and we get C equals the square root of 100 is 10. But don't stop there, okay? Because we know now that C equals 10, but that wasn't what the question wanted from us, okay? It said find the perimeter. So the perimeter is the distance around the outside. So I can start adding all of these things on the outside now. So I have 12 plus 8 is 20 plus, let's just do 10, is 30, and then 6 more, we have 36 units as our perimeter. That is our final answer. Okay? And then you guys do number 8 right now on your own. In number... 8, we're actually going to have to make two right triangles. So, what I would do is at the top here, I'm going to make a right triangle right there, and then at the bottom, I'm going to make a right triangle right here. So, in this one, we're also looking for the perimeter. So, just keep that in mind when we get to the end. So what I would do is I would start by, let's, let's start with our triangles. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of turn my paper a little bit so I can look at this triangle how I want to. Because I always like my, my right angle to be down there. I'm looking for C here. So I need to know this length here is 1, 2, 3. And then the height is 1, 2, 3, 4. So, in order to find this length here, I'm going to use the Pythagorean Theorem. So I've got a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I've got 3, 4, 
and then c squared. So I get 3 squared is 9, plus 4 squared is 16, equals c squared. All right, we get another nice, perfect one here, because 9 plus 16 is 25, equals c squared. And then we need to square root to get rid of squared, so we get 5 equals c. Okay, so we now know that this side equals 5. Now, I'm going to take a look at my other right triangle. So, I'm going to count this side here. 1, 2, 3. Okay, so the inside there, I'm going to write the 3. And then it's 1, 2, 3, 4. Alright, this is super nice. Okay, because we just had a 3, 4, 5 triangle on this side. This side is the same exact thing. 3, 4. So, I know this side is going to be 5. It is the same exact triangle as on the other side. So now that we know that, we can start finding the perimeter. Okay? So we know those are five, so we only have to find this side and this side. So let's go ahead and do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that side is nine. And then this side is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So now all I have to do is add those together. So I'm going to start with 5 plus 5 is 10, plus 9 is 19, plus 9 is 28. So our final answer is 28 units. Alright guys, thanks for watching.